Aaron Murphy joined now by uh, conference call here in this new world that we're all living in with uh, COVID-19 and all that. But Todd Kelman, the managing director of the Cardiff Devils on the line. And Todd, first off, news coming out, of course, the Champions Hockey League. So in a kind of negative time for our sport and all sports, we know the Olympics, the World Championships, everything called off. But in a bit of a negative time, some positivity. We will have a, an EIHL team in the CHL again, and it'll be your fourth uh, go around in the CHL. Yeah, we're really we're really pleased to to get that spot to represent the UK Elite League. Um, it's it's such a great tournament to be in, and um, the you know the league was supportive in in uh, putting us forward for that, which was great. So I you know I I want to thank uh, the the other teams in the league that were um, willing to do that. It's it was a tough situation with the league, you know, not completing and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, I appreciate all that. Well, that's that brings us on to a good point. I mean, all those guys in the Cardiff Devils dressing room, that's a very competitive bunch. You're, you're an organization that since you've moved to Cardiff, you're, you're focused on trophies and winning and great fan base. Just talk about how difficult. I mean, look, we know it had to happen. We know that the KHL was the last uh, organization to finally call time. And, of course, the IHF World Championships recently. But how tough was it to kind of walk away from like This is one of the best seasons we've seen in the IHL. The competition, I mean, the race for the league title would have been special. The playoffs would have been great. How, how tough was it to get to this point? Yeah, I mean, it was it was tough. It was it was really tough. And, and we, we'd been talking all that week. And I think I think we could see... You know, I think leading up to that week, the NBA uh, was the first real league to internationally to call it quits. And then the NHL followed suit. And that was a real shocker to me personally. Like, I, I just couldn't believe it. I, you know, it's awful to say because you always, you know, like it, it was a, it's a worldwide pandemic. And, and but you just you honestly think like it's not going to come that quick. We're not going to have to shut down our league. And um, and uh, and then we started discussing it. And it, it was Thursday. I think um, we talked about it the first time on the Thursday of that week. And it was all systems go because we were waiting for uh, for the prime minister to to give us some guidance and, and basically say like we can or we can't go ahead and and you know my attitude was you know there there's there was a, a rugby game a Six Nations game scheduled for Saturday afternoon um, that I had tickets to and uh, we, we were going to go to that and then go straight back and, and host the game that night and I thought it would be crazy if if my league if our team doesn't play in front of 3000 people when, you know, the rugby's playing in front of 90,000 people three hours earlier. And, um, and we woke up on Friday morning and, and, uh, we talked to a few teams and, and some players were self-isolating and, and that the only game that night was, um, Belfast versus Nottingham. But, uh, but there was teams involved that, that weren't going to have their full rosters. And, and we just, we said like, it's going to, if it doesn't happen tonight, if it doesn't happen tomorrow, it's going to happen Monday. Like, we might get another weekend and then you're, and then you're at the point where, you know, it's, it's a financial decision. Really. We're all like, like really what would have one more game got? It would have, it wouldn't have changed anything as far as, um, you know, like it wouldn't have changed. We wouldn't have completed the season. I think if that was the last weekend of the season, we would have done it, whether we had to play in front of, you know, uh, closed doors or if it, maybe even if it was one more week, we would have done that. But the fact that we were still three weeks away, there was no way we were going to finish the season, which is a shame because, um, I mean, I'm sure we'll touch on it, but it, it was an incredible season. And I'm not just talking about um, here in Cardiff and, and what we think we were going to do. I think it was an incredible season all around. Like, I mean, you know, I, it, there, it's a, there's some heartbreaking stories out there. You think of, uh, you know, like not to fo focus on another team, but like think of think of the season Coventry were having. And, and you know, they've had some some tough years. I know they won the playoffs a few years ago, but they've, they've had some tough years and I mean, what a team they put together. And you look at the, the final stats and they got the, the best save percentage with their goalie with CJ Mott. They got the leading goal scorer. They got the leading assist, uh, uh, assist what do you call it, assist getter. Um, incredible season for those guys. And uh, and, and same with Sheffield. Uh, another, you know, an, an amazing season. I know they won the Challenge Cup and and uh, and some of, the, some of the point totals and some of the goal totals those guys had. And... and it, it was a fun season of hockey, man. Like easily my favorite season in the EHL. It was it was great, and it's a shame it had to end so early. Yeah, I, I'm glad you said that because I had so much fun. I think we were supposed to do 17 or 18 broadcasts, and we did. Uh, I think we did 12. Um, but I had so much fun everywhere we went up to that point, including I think our last game was the Challenge Cup, obviously. Um, everywhere we went, there just there's a real buzz right now with the talent pool and the level on the ice. 
and obviously kind of feeding up into the, you know, GB's been on the ups upward swing. Obviously, we're, we're the heights they've scaled the last few years. So everything has been positive. And so none of us could see this coming. I mean, you know, I was standing next to you in the in the broadcast booth uh, at the Challenge Cup. And, and not even a few weeks later, we're in sort of a totally different world and hard to predict. And now we know the Olympics, the World Championships. But just touch on that a little bit, because, I mean, you're the managing director of this club and you're part of the league. I mean, you've got to worry about your players, you've got to worry about your fans. And so in the end, the right thing had to be happening. And that's what happened, what you did. Yeah, no, I, I think morally, we had to do what we had to do. I'm, I'm glad we did it when we did it. I'm glad we didn't try to, to milk one more weekend because it wouldn't have been fair, I don't think, to the fans uh, or, or to the players, more importantly, probably. Um, but uh, yeah, I, th I thought, you know, the, the, the one thing I would say, um, you know, there's fans I guess all of us read too much on social media these days, but there's a lot of questions about, you know, the, the, the group in the, in the boardroom sometimes. And I think there wasn't one person arguing to, to keep going, you know, as soon as, as soon as one team said, I think we got a couple of play, well, we got a couple of players self isolating. It was just immediate. Okay. The, the vote, it was probably the quickest vote we've ever done and the most impactful vote financially for teams. It was just, we, you know, we were on a conference call and Tony uh, Smith, um, chairman of the league, went around the table, literally just called out everyone's name, and it, it took about 30 seconds to, to get the votes in, and, and that was it. Everyone voted in favor to shut it down. So, I think you made a good point there. Social media is such a double-edged sword, isn't it? It's great to allow people to know when your games are, if there's promotions, stuff like that, but people do give up. But let's be honest, the boardroom, the guys in that room do a good job because this is a 10-team league and 10 different business models, and everyone's trying to do the best by their fans, by their club. Everyone wants to win or set their own goals. So I think everyone should be patted on the back. I know I know Fife had a tough year, uh, but we did a game in your barn where Fife played really well, and you needed to, to score in the last minute to, to get the points there. So there's a lot of parity in the league, and, and you bring up Coventry. I mean, Danny Stewart really had those guys going, didn't he? You, you must have been thinking, and your coach, Andrew Lord, must have been thinking, God, it's tough to win. It's tough to win on the road. It's just tough to win full stop. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the, the, there were years in this elite league where there were there were teams that you could walk over. And and it seems like every year we keep talking about the parity and the parity and it gets better and better. But like, really, I mean, anyone can beat anyone. I know it's such a cliche, but but it, it's true. Like, you're talking about, you know, there, there were years we won the league with like, you know, 85, 86% win rates. And, and now you're looking at teams with 68, 70%. Um, and there's a lot of teams right in that, in that, in that mix there. And that's great. That's what you want to see. And, and the, the thing I would say, probably the most disappointing thing for the league as a whole is you think these last few weeks, I mean, you know, like it, it was so great because we, the owners and, and, the, and the management were, were, you know, you always, you message a, a guys now and then after games and, and, you were noticing crowds. It was like, you know, like, Hey, great job to Steven Dundee. You guys were, you know, had probably your biggest cry. I was watching on the, on the webcast. I'm a nerd. Right. So I, if I'm not playing, even when I am playing, I'm probably watching two or three other games on, on, uh, online at the same time. And it's so great to see big crowds in Dundee and big crowds in Manchester and, and, um, everything was coming together, you know, like that's what you want. Like it's, you, you can't just be insular in the boardroom and you can't be insular thing in, in a, in a league, uh, when you depend on, the success, at least on the gate of every other team, you know, like I want Nottingham, I want Sheffield I, uh, to be sold out every weekend. I also want Dundee and, and Fife and, and, you know, every team, Glasgow, Manchester. I want them all to have big crowds um, because you want teams and you want ownership to be steady and, and sustainable. And, and that's probably what what is going to be so impressive with this. I think, you know, like there will be leagues in Europe that, that struggle to get through this. And I think the elite league will get through this, um, with 10 teams intact, which is the most important thing. And, and, you know, we're, we're on, we're on weekly, um, conference calls to discuss this and the state of the league and, and ensuring that everyone's surviving and we're taking measures to make that, make sure they do. And that's, that's what we want. We want, uh, we want the fans to be able to come back whenever this passes and it's going to pass. Uh, we want 10 teams back and we want to get the fans back. And I think, I think the fans will come back because, this, you know, it sucks right now. It sucks sitting in your house and, and not following anything online and not watching highlights. And, and I mean, that's in my little world and your little world. And, and there's things that are made way, way bigger than, than, than me being pissed off that I don't have hockey highlights to watch. And, and 
you, you, you realize that, <laughs> you know, people worship the players and at every level, whether it's the NHL or the EHL and, and you realize that like, you see what people are doing for the NHS and, and, and people on the front line and how important just the basic services that we take for granted every day are, um, on a day-to-day -day basis. And, and it's just so impressive. It's, uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's really moving actually. Well, it puts it in perspective, doesn't it? Because, I mean, I would have been in Switzerland for most of May for the World Championships. I was supposed to be in Tokyo for all of July and part of August for the Olympics. And you're disappointed and you're sad when you hear that those things are canceled. But you're also, like, kind of relieved because, you know, it just is the right thing to do. We can't we can't take for granted our health and, and, and athletes' health and, and fans' health. So, yeah, really good. And I'm glad that you say that. I think a lot of fans will take a lot of uh, happiness in that you say, like, the EIHL back with 10 teams back growing because look at this year we had the the pride weekend was a fantastic initiative in free sports we rocked up into Dundee that was such a fun night uh, the first night of pride weekend uh, Dundee Glasgow and there was just so many special moments this year and to know that you feel that the league will be healthy and there'll be 10 teams back and, and again the level will keep to keep on growing we know GB will be in the top flight in 2021 I mean so there's a lot of positives uh, to look forward to for all the hockey fans and sports fans in general yeah absolutely it's it's it like you know like there's no bones about it it's a terrible situation right now not not just selfishly for our league or for our organization or for our city or whatever it's this is you're right. Like the, the, the I, me and my wife were trying to compare this to something, and and the thing that we it remind us that that fear that you got inside of you, and when wherever you were in the world, if you can remember 9/11, um, and but it passed, and you know it, you, you still woke up the next day and, and and went to a shop and maybe went for dinner, and you were a little depressed and scared, and and it's it's that it's that not knowing, and I think that's what's so scary right now is just not knowing, and and. But the thing is, like, you know, I'm I'm not I'm not not trying to be a scientist. I've read way too much on the coronavirus. I think, unlike everyone, I'm I'm overwhelmed with it. But, um, you know, people if people are smart and stay at home and and just abide by the rules, we'll get through this. We it might take longer than we all expect, but there will be a time when we'll come out of our houses and and we'll want to go back to hockey games and we'll want to go back to shops and we'll and we'll probably be a little bit more aware of of. Uh, of people around us, but I, I hope, I hope we'll be a little bit nicer too. Um, the one thing I would say about social media when this all happened, man, did the, did the bad stuff on social media stop at least for a few days, you know? And, um, and it just feels like people are nicer to each other and people it's, I think it's a good, like, I mean, you never want, you never want a tragedy to be, you know, someone saying, well, I think it's a good wake up call. Cause I saw someone saying that and I'm not saying it's a good wake up call. What I'm saying is like, it's just, um, it's a reality check on what's important in life. And, um, you know, you can take positives with anything. And like, for me, it's positive that I get to hang out with my two little boys and, and that I don't see a lot of during the season because I'm always at work and I'm always working late and I'm on the weekends, I'm going to games and, and, uh, and they're probably having their most fun with me. Cause I've been, they're probably sick of me by now, but, but, you know, like we're playing hockey in the back garden and we're kicking the football around and we're, you know, I'm doing math lessons with them and it's a lot of good quality time. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to take solace in that, that uh, I'm getting to enjoy that with them. But um, on the same breath, you know, as an organization and as a league, I am happy that we are being positive and trying to keep the fans engaged. And, and I love seeing, um, I love seeing all the teams put out kind of classic games and I kind of got caught up watching a couple and then I thought, geez, I should probably start doing this too. So, so the devil's fans can look forward to some, some classic games too. So, but, um, but, uh, but yeah, it's good. It's good to see. And, 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 uh, like Glasgow did a pretty cool thing the other night where they actually did like a whole game night and, uh, sold raffle tickets and all that kind of stuff. And I thought that was a brilliant idea. Sheffield showed a game the other night. Um, I think it's great. I think it's really cool. Uh, I've been watching a lot of NHL classic games too. Probably so have you. Um, but it, it's, it's hard to, it's, it's hard not to follow the, the virus and read about it because it's, it's really the only news right now. Well, this is why I wanted to connect with you just to talk about hockey, talk about the positives. And I think you've said it all right there. I guess we'll leave it with one, uh, one question. Would, would a young Todd Kelman, would a young number 44 be able to play in the elite league with the standards we're seeing uh, year on year now? <laughs> Man, that's a, that's a tough question, Murph. I, I sure hope so. I, th I think, I think, uh, 
I think the elite league is, is, um, you know, I talk, I talk a lot. Of, I compared the elite league to the super league a lot. Um, my last couple of years and, uh, you know, when it was basically, you know, it was four line hockey. We were, we, I remember my last year in the super league, we went to, there was no champions league back then. There was the, the continental cup was sort of the champions league. And we, we went, we, we actually played in the, the, I think they were called the super 10 final or something like that. And we played against, we played against Lugano and we played against Davos. We actually beat Davos. We beat the Swiss champs that year. The, the Belfast giants beat the Swiss champs. So I, I'm comfortable. I could play at this level. Um, at maybe at 25, definitely not at 40. Um, probably not at 30 either, but, uh, but yeah, I think you could have, but we had to end on a smile because uh, that's what it's all about. And whenever we run into each other in the gantry or at a, an arena, we have a laugh. And I, I can't wait to put the microphone on on Free Sports for that first Champions Hockey League game. I can't wait for the draw whenever that will be in these uncertain times. But positive times ahead. And, and Killer, I just wanted to say thanks for reaching out. Uh, mind yourself, take care of your family, and keep the positive vibes out there for the Cardiff Devils fans and certainly Free Sports. We look forward to being a part of your uh, your Champions Hockey League journey next year. Thank you. Thanks a lot.